This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here to go back to a project that is very near and dear to my heart, maybe my most famous DIY project ever, that being Deathmobile. The Deathmobile! This was the original under $100 DIY project that has been reproduced, what, hundreds, maybe even thousands of times. It's actually quite amazing. But that version, that was the old show, that was the old design, and that was before steering wheels were even measured in Newton meters. So it's really time to build a modern version of the Deathmobile, and this time we're just gonna go ahead and call it Deathmobile 2.0 right out of the gates. So let me lay out the plan and then we're gonna go ahead and get things started. The concept is very simple. Build a rig out of like wood that you can get from the local hardware store, making it very inexpensive. And it also means that anybody with a drill, a saw, a moderate level of talent would be able to build the very same rig. For a seat, we're gonna be using, actually coincidentally, the exact seat from the original Deathmobile, but basically you can get any used seat from eBay, Craigslist, Let It Go, or you could even get the dune buggy seat from Summit Racing, which is only 40 bucks. In this video, we'll show you how we planned the build and then how we designed the rig accordingly. By the end of that process, we should be able to make a very good parts list and then acquire those parts for the actual build, which is actually gonna be episode two of this series, which will be filmed live on Simpit Live on Twitch and then an edited version, which will also be aired right here on YouTube. So let's get things started. I want to be using a GT driving position because I find that to be one of the most comfortable driving positions and easy to get in and out of the chassis. I used my R seat as a starting point and took some basic measurements, including making adjustments for the seat that I would be using, as well as any slight changes in shape that I would be tailoring to my body. You could also sit in a regular chair and use a block or box to hold your feet about where you would want them to be and measure that if you didn't have a chassis. We're basically looking for the height difference between the pedals and the seat, the distance between the seat and the pedals, the height of the wheel deck, and the distance of the wheel deck to the seat. These would be starting measurements that would then be adjusted during the build as needed. I also used a free program on the internet called Tinkercad to draw up my design and make my parts list. Tinkercad essentially allows me to make various different shapes and then alter their size or dimensions as needed. For example, I can make a box and then create it into the shape of a two by four, which is three and a half by one and a half inches and then however long you want it to be. In the case of my Deathmobile, it will be 48 inches long so we will need to build two of these. My design is simple. Build a square, cover it with plywood sheet, giving it more strength, as well as a nice bottom for the rig. And to do that, I will join the 48 inch pieces with two more cut to 21 inches, giving us a total width of a 24 by 48 inch square. I can then add my plywood sheet on top of it. I made a mock-up of my seat and pedals and even later my steering wheel to help me with the visuals and to double check my measurements before cutting any wood. I add my pedals and my seat to the structure and then I add a couple more two by fours to lift my pedals up in the air a bit and then could move on making the wheel deck uprights. I had measured the distance that I wanted my wheel deck relative to the front of the chassis. So I first made some two by four uprights to hold the deck at the right height and distance. But I also want to be able to get in and out of the chassis easily. I decided the best answer was to use two uprights on the right side and one on the left, giving me that access. Once I had them spaced nicely, I could add my wheel deck and give it some angle. As I size up the pieces, they will end up confirming my measurements if all goes well. I will also want to cross brace these uprights in any way that I can. I know that I will be mounting a shifter and a handbrake, so I started with the rail going down the right hand side of my rig, kind of like many profile chassis designs you see today. This ties the two uprights together and also supports them with another connection to the main box. Then I threw in a couple more cross braces from the front to the uprights and one more little deck support on the left side that I might not even need. 
Bam, we have a chassis. Let's go ahead and throw a wheel on it and see how it looks. Now at this point, I actually thought about it overnight or slept on it, so to speak. And I did think of a few changes or a couple of things that were haunting me. I was a little concerned about the clearance or the amount of space in that footwell, and it was kind of confusing me. So I double checked some measurements and it turns out that my mock-up pedal set was a little too wide and that actually affected my overall design from the very beginning. So I went back to work, I narrowed the pedals a little bit, and I thought my pedals would be a little bit too high. Well, it turns out that my dreams were correct and there were some adjustments that needed to be made, which is a great time for me to mention whenever doing a project of any kind, if you have wood, metal, whatever, if you're making cuts, always be sure to measure twice and cut once just to make sure you're getting it right. So I went back to work on the design and I started tearing a few parts off and redesigning a few of the pieces of the design. I fixed the pedal width. I removed the pieces, lifting the pedals off the base. I removed the plywood and added a couple more supports to strengthen the lower base as well as adding cross bracing to the uprights and then I started putting it all back together again. This included redesigning the cross braces and a slight adjustment to the side rail to accommodate the seat. And when it was finally finished, I could get a good look at it and see if it looked right proportionately. I could also double check my measurements and if all looked good with this drawing, I could actually make my parts list. So piece by piece, I would confirm the size and add it to my list. And when I added it to the list, I would change the color of those pieces to know that it had been inventoried. Then I could go on to figuring out how many two by fours I would need and how I would cut them. With each two by four being 96 inches long, I would end up needing just over four pieces so I'll buy five and I'll have an extra 82 inches if I need to lift the pedals or add another cross brace. With my plywood, my two by fours, and the way too long hardwood for my deck, along with the screws to put it all together, it came out to be 85 bucks total, plus your seat. So my next goal is a trip to the hardware store to pick up that inventory list. I will then go out on the balcony, cut all the pieces to size, and be ready to actually do the build. So my plan is to do the build live at Simpit Live on Twitch. That's going to be Thursday, April 22nd at 9 a.m. So be sure to join us at that Simpit Live on Twitch, 9 a.m. Thursday for the live build. And I'll also have an edited version coming out very quickly right here at YouTube as well. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can find out when that video or other videos like like that one come out. I'm very excited about this one. It's long overdue. It's been much requested. It's one of my most popular emails is asking me to do another death mobile. So here it is. That's going to do it for this one. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.